So, uh, welcome all, and uh, thank you for coming along. Um, Internet of Things talks, Makespace, and I'm um, talking about accelerating product development through, uh, through prototyping. There's a couple of things that Green Energy Options does. We are a company that is uh, very much in the green space. We make energy monitors. More recently, we've started getting involved in internet-connected heating systems because heating is where most homes spend most of their money in terms of energy consumption. Um, at the start of doing COSY, which is the heating system, and I'll show you uh, more about that a bit later on, we, I was quite keen to understand, for a company that was very good at making very high volume products, um, typically our products run in volumes of hundreds of thousands to millions, they tend to take quite a long time to make. If we wanted to get into a space where products needed to change more quickly, uh, where they needed to be more, more dynamic, could we actually do the development of the product in a much, in a much quicker way? And this is where we started looking at um, how we used uh, prototyping to, to do the product development. So what is COSY? Uh, it's an internet-connected heating control management system. What is it? Uh, so it talks about the rapid product development trial. It's a product with, at the moment, five components, and the number of components grow all the time. Um, all the prototyping uh, was done with access to Makespace. Um, mostly done by me, but uh, some, so, uh, I had some friends and colleagues help me on occasion. And the important thing is where products of this type typically take between 12 and sometimes as long as 24 months, but between 12 and 18 months to develop it. We went from concept to delivering first product in five months. And we did that through a couple of techniques that I'll, I'll, I'll talk through. So, Sure, everybody here um, has been involved in product development, but what is product development? Um, it means different things to different people. Mostly, it's around taking an idea and turning it into a manufactured item, um, turning an opportu opportunity into revenue and profit, um, making something that consumers want to buy, creating something new. I mean, it, it really depends on, on, on what you want from product development. For me, it's about taking that idea, making it real, making it in a way that I can actually market and sell it. Why do it quickly? There's always this trade-off between why don't we make a perfect product, the product that nobody can ever compete with, and one that goes from idea into the marketplace in the fastest time that we can manage what do, you, what do we get from that? Well, it's always a trade-off between that super perfect, near perfect, optimum product and the product that actually hits the sweet spot in the market. There is no magic solution to determining what that sweet spot is. For each product, you have to go and evaluate it. But the trade-offs are um, really around, <coughs> do I need to have all the features that I got in the, in the product? Or do I need to get my product into the marketplace quickly because there's competition? Fortunately, with internet-connected products today, we can do both. We can actually get a product into the market quickly, <coughs> and we can then use the internet to continuously update it. And we'll talk about how we do this on Cozy later on. So what could I do to reduce the total time it took to develop um, the, the Cozy products? Product development goes through a couple of typical stages. We specify the product, we discuss it, we analyze the product, we plan it. Um, in the case of the sorts of products that, that, that I'm involved in making, we develop some hardware, we develop some firmware, we test the product, we transfer it into manufacture, we manufacture the product. In fact, our company manufactures most of its product in China. We then ship it back to the UK again, and once we shipped it back to the UK, we put it into stock and we can, we can sell it. Done sequentially, done in a, in a way that minimizes the, the risk of a previous 
um, phase not being ready and the next phase not being able to take everything the previous phase had developed, typically 12 to 18 months. So where does MakeSpace fit in? It's a plug for MakeSpace. Prototype. This is a fantastic place to come along and make prototypes. Software engineers are great at doing prototypes. If you're going to try a new algorithm, you'll just hack something out, you'll take some, some, some data, you'll see if it does what you expect it to do. Not all hardware engineers, certainly not product development engineers, are that good at doing prototypes. They are pressured to producing that end product, they're pressured at producing something that you, the, the marketing team can actually show a potential customer. And what we need to do is find a way that we can actually do all these things in parallel, and we'll talk about that next, because it's the, that's the only way you get all the things you need to do. There is no way of not doing some of them. But rather than doing them sequentially, try and do as many of them in parallel. And we do a lot of that through prototyping. So as an example, that's the, 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 the two typical timelines you find for product development. Um, if you're working with a relatively small team, if you're working with a team that's, that's doing a, a lot of products, you go through that thing. You do each thing step by step, but you do it in one long, one long sequential stream. <coughs> and at the end, you're manufacturing and shipping a product that has uh, version one features, and it's taken you, if you're lucky, 12 months, unlucky, 18 months. What we did for the, for the COSY development trial was we looked at every opportunity that we had to do two things. What could be parallel up? And it was a, a very aggressive look at what could be parallel up. And in all of those things, what could be prototype? So what can we prototype? If we prototype it, does it save us time? If we're going to prototype it and it does save us time, can we make it at MakeSpace? In which case, I would typically be here from between midnight to six in the morning. And if we can't make it at MakeSpace, can we get somebody else to, to make it? The sorts of things that we did for um, Cozy, and our, our, you can come and have a look at these a bit later on. Uh, we, we, we accelerated a lot of the, the, the concept of the product by actually trialing it I just go back a slide by trialing it with um, customers in their homes by actually taking the, the, the prototype boards that we developed for the firmware team to develop on and actually turning them into real products and we installed about 20 systems in, in people's homes. They were, they were very generous to allow us because they're not great looking but they're actually fine and they're very functional. So the sorts of things that we did here at MakeSpace, uh, um, we did all the firmware development platforms, so boards that would go into various things, cut some acrylic panels that we could get them on, it was great for the firmware team. Why? Because they weren't having to deal with wires that kept breaking off. Everything was in the right place. If they wanted to pick something up and go and show a colleague, they could pick the whole panel up, take it away. We did enclosures like that. It was perfect to put something in the home. Uh, in home prototypes, we did heat shields. Uh, one of, the, one of the, the, the devices is not only a display, it also measures the temperature of the environment that you're in. We have to separate the heat um, from the inside of the product where there's a charging battery and a number of other things that get hot from the device that has to measure temperature to less than a degree accuracy. We made plastic wash washers, we made the, 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 the Mylar heat shields. On the CNC mill, we actually did some very low tolerance hole cutting in plastic boxes. And when we got to the early manufacturing stages, um, the company that normally makes some, our test jigs said, sorry guys, it's three months, we're completely, completely full. It's three months before you're gonna get any test jigs out of us. So we made the manufacturing test jigs here as well, which are, are um, engineering plastic forms with lots, of, lots and lots and lots of holes drilled in them. Um, the CNC mill did a great job of drilling that. So, cozy prototypes. Um, you see some of the real ones there. The uh, display with temperature measurement. It's an internet hub, boiler controller. That works in conjunction with an app on your smartphone or a, uh, a, a web interface on, on your PC um, that connects to your boiler. That tells you what it's doing and also if you needed to measure the temperature. 
and that's the bit that talks to the internet and talks to each of those devices as well. There's a, uh, an, an 868 uh, radio subsystem in there that communicates between, uh, between the devices. What did it become? That's the product that we um, developed. Uh, we funded part of it through a Kickstarter campaign, which if you're ever wondering about just how, how much of, a, of, of, of an interest level is your product going to achieve in the marketplace, Kickstarter is not only a great place for getting some additional funding, it's also a great place to go and test out the response to your product, see what other people think of it, see what your fellow <coughs> geeks think of it. Um, you, know, it's, you, you get extraordinary feedback. We've created a, a cozy community as part of that that are still involved in the development and the design of our, of our cozy product. And uh, yes, there you see the, the three hardware products, or sorry, the two hardware products, we're missing the switch and the, uh, and the app. So as a very quick run through, I thought we'd use the time for Q&A around product development and prototyping. So How do you compare to Nest? <laughs> How do we compare to <laughs> Nest? Uh, we're both uh, heating controllers. <laughs> and this is in your paralyl uh, parallelization thing. You have firmware development starts after all of the design and analysis. Surely you're starting off. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, simulation and Absolutely, yes. So, you know, because, because a lot of these come from a, 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 a continuous product development process, there are a number of modules that come into that. Yeah, so that's already there. Uh, absolutely, and okay. of course, we, we are you know, in parallel to our product development, we're also doing a number of other yeah. things. It was really just, a, just an, an opportunity to try and show how we've taken this long serial stream yeah. and put it into a, into a, into a highly parallel. <laughs> I mean, for me, one of the big challenges is decoupling the end of one process from the start of the other. And um, an example from recently is when we go to manufacture, we can't normally start manufacture until we've actually got the firmware on, on the platform because that's how the product has to come out of the market. This is the first product that Geo makes that actually leaves the factory with enough firmware on it to test the product and to know when it's connected to the internet. And the very first thing it does when it's connected to the internet is it actually goes and downloads its most recent load of firmware and brings it up to, up to scratch. So it means that we now have all that time that we're going through manufacturing, that we're going through product validation. These are products that go into people's homes, so they have to go through a full safety regime. They have to go through the normal C regime, um, which can take if you're doing really well, six weeks. If you're not doing really well, it could take five, six months. So we can do all of that in parallel to um, the, the, the rest of the development of the, of the product. Yep. Um, did you have any smash ups or, or uh, you know, things that uh, you pushed too hard and went wrong because of that? Yes. Yes, we wouldn't, <laughs> we wouldn't have been pushing the envelope if we. Uh, if we if we hadn't, so what did you learn? Um, you can never do you can never do enough validation with your consumers, and this is something that internet connected products allow you to do an awful lot of. Carefully said, with the consumer's permission, you can not only change what they're doing and give them an, an ongoing updated product, but you can also see how they're using the product. And one has to be very careful in that process of updating the product that you don't manage to lock it out somehow. And if, if you've only got 20 products out there, it's fine. You can go and you can go and collect them and recode them and start them again. But yes, we 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 learned a lot of lessons. And the intention was to actually see you know, what happened if we if we bumped our heads. You learn very quickly that um, your hardware suppliers. We don't make our own PC boards, so we have somebody make boards. We have somebody assemble them for us. Um, uh, that where you're normally used to getting a three or five day turnaround from your from your board manufacturer, that one day you go along to them and say, okay, we need this in three days. They say, sorry, we've got half of our lines are down. So we're, we're running it three weeks. So you go and find somebody else. Um, 
components that you're used to buying that are typically on four or five weeks um, lead time maximum and you can generally get a hundred off if you go to one of the the, the, uh, um, the the stockists like RS or Farnell suddenly somebody else has bought them all up and you can't actually get get hold of them so you have to go and you know, buy them somewhere in the, in the world so yes there's nothing like trying to do something really quickly to discover all these things that normally just disappear in the noise of a, of a, of a nice long development cycle. Um, I had a question about the consumer part of things. Well, you, you mentioned already, like, will people be open for an ongoing sort of developing product in their household? In what kind of way did you realize afterwards that maybe the hardware also needs to be updated? So what, because I can imagine that when people start really using it, so it was it was a very conscious very conscious thing during the development cycle we did actually do a number of um, consumer trials with bits of hardware with mock bits of hardware we actually took hardware into people's homes and said right you know, so let's just wa do a walkthrough how would you expect to use your product in your in your home and that actually influenced and in many cases using those very coarse early prototypes. Um, Everything from the UI on the on the prototype through to the information that people were, were given, through to the fact that somebody said, "Well, actually, I I want to be able to hang it on the wall," and I, somebody else said, "I want to be able to put it on the table," and somebody said, "Well, I've got a four-year-old who's going to pick it up and he's going to push all the buttons. And is that going to turn my heating off?" So yes, you do you do a lot of interaction with consumers. It's not always viable to to do continuous interaction with consumers, and this is where again, with the consumer's permission. You can actually, and I can see how each of these products is used. I can see when somebody's picked it up and whether they've got it hanging on the wall or whether they're holding it in their hand, whether they walk it around. I can see if they've moved it from room to room uh, because the device happens to have an accelerometer. We also loaded the hardware with a lot of features that will not be in future products because we don't actually need it. But at the time, we didn't know whether it was going to be really valuable or not. And it was much easier initially to put the hardware in to use it to, to, to take um, streams of information from it and then discard it as we, as we went along. So that was, that, for me, that, was, that touches on the question I had earlier. I think it kind of partially answers it. Yeah. So I come from the software side and the make space has got me starting to fabricate hardware type to these boxes and things like that. But, but I'm finding already that, that to think less specifically about the end goal for this and what I want it to do because I'm, I'm not designing all the way through to that. And what I'm putting together at the start needs to be more generic because I haven't then done the iterations with the software to go back for an iteration on the hardware. Did you find the same thing? Did you find what you've designed this time needed to be more generic in order to start that? Certainly what we needed to do up front had, had to be featureful. So there was no point in saying, once you'd already shipped the first million devices, if only we could tell if somebody, we knew somebody had, had picked it up. No. We, we, we needed a feature in the, in the product where we turned, in the case of that um, prototype, we turned the backlight off. Um, the first generation product, one of the things we did going from the first generation to, to from the prototype to the first generation is go from a backlit LCD to a very simple um, LED display was because we saw that in the early days of somebody using it, they didn't put it on the charge base often enough and they used it quite a bit. So we needed a display that actually used less, less energy. Mm. We also changed the battery technology to, to, to accommodate that. But we only realized that because we could actually see somebody walking around with this, with this product. It was a new thing in their home. And we could see from the server interaction that they were playing with, uh, with the controls on their, on their mobile phone and they were looking at the display. And, yeah, so early on, feature filled, we have now funneled down to a much more controlled feature sense. So the, the, um, the system says so the, it's the first generation system. Um, the second generation system is, is, is well into development cycle and uh, you, you, know, you, you almost certainly see some, some uh, traffic around, around that in the next couple of weeks. Do you, do you have those? I do, actually I have a, I have a box with, uh, with some of them in there. Um, so yeah, it's you know, it's a it's a, a really useful thing to be able to start with that very early thing, saying, "Well, I don't know if it's good enough." You know, the very first version it was a big board that had a couple of things stuck on it. Um, 
It really depends what you're doing, though. If you want to make, a, make yourself a, a development platform going into the future, yes, then make it very generic. Ultimately, the value of the product is measured on how useful is it and how much money do we make from it. And by the nature of what you said about customer interaction and getting that feedback, um, potentially you've got to start with the report because actually you don't really know what it is you're going to build Absolutely. until you've got that feedback. Now you can take a lot of time talking to customers, doing a lot of research, trying to understand that. Until they get it in their hands. And you know, it, it's, it's one of the really interesting things when you're doing a lot of customer feedback research. Actually, until somebody has paid for a product, and everybody who has one of those has paid full market price for, for that product, that then you actually start getting really valuable, you know, real consumer feedback from it. They have paid for it, they've invested in it, they will tell you what they actually want to do with it. And that's what you then plow into your next generation. Over the five months, uh, how big was your team? How many people did you work with? Um, the hardware development team was, I have one hardware engineer, myself. Um, he does 95% of the work and I get in his way mostly. Uh, the firmware team was three people, although uh, the guy who did the coding for the, for the hub was also very much involved in the server side software. On the server side was one person. Um, two testers, um, and we also have a manufacturing team who take products into, in, into manufacture. So on average, between five and, and seven people. All right, well, any last questions? Did you have any industrial designers, user experience people? On we don't. No, 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 no. We, 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 we actually have a full-time UX specialist and we work with, with a, um, a, a local industrial design company who we went through four or five different industrial design scenarios and philosophies and you know, starting out with some very different looking products through to some very wacky looking products and eventually settled on, on, on those ones. Are you going to be around afterwards? Yes, yes, yeah. I, yes I will. Okay. Can you give me the context of the industrial design? <laughs> I can indeed. I can indeed. Right. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you.